<laughs> so what what is a chart plotter? It's an electronic version of paper charts that you would navigate, you know, you draw your course and navigation. They're not always current and it's just a navigational aid. Okay, next I wanna show you my marine VHF. I have a standard horizon GX2400 GPS. Cutting off the old VHF power. Oh, look at that. We've got all sorts of AIS going on. A drill won't fit in there, so I gotta drill it by hand. And the wood is too dense to screw a screw in there without a pilot hole. So I just do it by hand. Hello, welcome to Sailing Soleil. My name is Andy. And in today's episode, I'm gonna show you some of my uh, electronics that I have installed on the boat and how they kind of work together. So some of this stuff was previously filmed a while back because um, for instance, my chart plotter, I installed that you know, right when I got the boat, but I never put that footage in a video. So we're gonna take a couple of the different projects that I, I've previously done, show you the installation of those projects, and then um, if you stick around to the end of the video, I'm gonna show, I'll have an explanation of kind of how those different electronics work together. So let's get into it. Hello sailors, my name's Andy and this is my wife Misty. A few years ago, we bought an old neglected sailboat for 3,500 bucks and I've been working on it ever since. I literally learned how to sail on YouTube, but later we both took some lessons. I used to think that sailing was only for rich people. It's not. I used to also think that you had to sail around the world to have fun. You don't. Click subscribe, give it a thumbs up, and join us, and we'll show you how much fun you can have coastal cruising on a cheap sailboat. Welcome to Sailing Soleil. Okay, so I am going to mount my new chart plotter on the boat and I came up with a pretty cheap and what I think is going to be corrosion resistant way of mounting it because you know with those pod things those pod things are super expensive so what I came up with is a pretty inexpensive way I cut, took a piece of just oak and I cut it out like the like the stand so it's gonna go on there kind of like that and I'll give you better. Whoa. -y. Nothing like a big explosion in Long Beach. Anyways, it's gonna go on like that. And I'll sand it up and everything. I just didn't want to do too much work before I made sure everything worked like I wanted to. This way. I wanna go this way because I want this to be flat. It's dark already because it's December 5th. And this is the time of year that the days does the sun go down, goes down at like 4:45? Now I've got to do. I've got to put. I'm gonna put this here. Drill some holes, bolt it, and then I can put this here with the chart plotter there. Trying not to make a mess. Sturdy. I like that it has a little bit of shock absorption, not just super 
tight. So what I did is these are LED light bar clamps. So just make sure if you're gonna do this, they all, all these light bar clamps, they come with a bunch of different size uh, little rubber things that you could put inside there so that you can put it around different size pipe, you know, inch tube or one and a half inch tube, whatever. But you can size these. It, they're a little bulky, not the smallest clamp ever, but it's because they're kind of universal. Anyway, you see what I did. I used it, made a little platform for this. Next, we're gonna put this on and just screw it in. Like a glove without a centimeter to spare. I got lucky on that one. Well, I guess I could move it down and it wouldn't be a big deal. Nice. Look at that. All right, now that you've seen the install of the chart plotter, let me show you what I've got. Um, my chart plotter is a Raymarine Axiom 7. It's uh, a fairly small chart plotter, but I like the way it fits in between here. Uh, currently, for the purposes of this video, I have it turned around facing me here, but obviously it would normally be turned around the other way so you could see it from the helm. Um, but I just turned it around. So what what is a chart plotter? It's an electronic version of paper charts that you would navigate, you know, you draw your course and navigation. It has all that information electronically and what's nice about electronic charts is they can be updated when the depths change or a new obstruction happens or they put it in the water or something. But the electronic charts can be updated and then you have current information. They're not always current and it's just a navigational aid so don't trust it too much but it is pretty accurate. Um, so Raymarine Axiom 7 and and what else does it do it's basically like the brain or the you know the screen to display the information for all your different electronics that you have on the boat um, that will work with it like my my wind speed sensor up at the top of the mast it's called an anemometer but i can see that the wind speed here is uh 10 knots you know 10 12 knots and um you can control your autopilot or see your depth. Whatever transducers or other sensors that you have on the boat, they usually will have a place to be displayed on your chart plotter. Um, so that's what I have is a Raymarine Axiom 7. Read more about it if you want to know. I'm sure there's tons of videos out there. Okay, next I want to show you my Marine VHF. Um, I have a standard Horizon GX2400 GPS. It's got built-in AIS receiving and uh, b before I get too much into that let's check out the install on that hi guys I don't normally do unboxings but I'm gonna do an unboxing video of this uh, standard horizon matrix uh, GX 2400 GPS it's a 25 watt VHF FM marine transceiver it has a dual channel AIS receiver and display. It's got NEMA 2000, which is the reason I bought it. I wanted to get something that would display the AIS on my chart plotter and on my iPad and stuff. Um, and then it's got a built-in GPS antenna. Anyway, let's unbox it. Let's see what's going on. The reason I didn't go with the, uh, the 6000 is this will split your AIS and VHF antenna for you so that you don't need two separate antennas or a splitter. Right, let's just see what's inside. I literally have not opened this up yet. Manuals. Got a nice uh, cover. Cover for it. And your stainless steel nuts and bolts. Uh, your power cable with the built-in fuse. Oh, it's a USB cable. Micro USB. 
And then this is the little clip for your handset. And, oh, these are the little um, nuts for the side when you mount it, for this, for this here. So those were the nuts for this, for when I mount it. So it's got your distress here. Not sure what's under here. That's a USB port. And uh, this is your squelch volume and uh, antenna. This is probably your channels. Then it's got an external GPS that you can hook up to it. Uh, this is your NEMA 2000 plug. This is for your handset, it's the RAM. So this is for um, an external, another handset, which the RAM has, it's, it's, um, it's like this, but it has the screen on it so that you can see what's on the screen. And I imagine that you'd be able to see the AIS from there as well. Okay, so why am I replacing my, uh, my VHF? First off, AIS and NEMA 2000 AIS. That was the main number one reason I got this, but it's also pretty old, but it does function. It functions perfectly well. Cutting off the old VHF power. So this is pretty cool. I'm, I'm just making sure everything works before I fully install it, but you just use the <clears throat> this little wheel here to uh, enter the menu system. I'm gonna put in my MMSI number real quick. All right, let's see. see there's so much interference between you and me. Oh, you're like five miles away. no, I'm a dumbass. Hold on one second. I don't even have my antenna hooked up. Hold on, I just put power in. Hold on. <laughs> Hold on. Okay, now I've got the antenna hooked up. Let's see. Oh, hey. Uh, hear that shit? Hell yeah. Now I see how I answer this. Oh. I got it. So what do I do? Yo, yo. Yo, yo. yo let's be 2310. Kill dragger. <laughs> what is 2310? <laughs> it's from a Ali G episode. It's oh. <laughs> Damn it, I'm so slow on the uptake sometimes. All right, so you can hear me there, right? Stoked, I've got a good copy on you, Robert. It just went above it, so let's hear. Stoked, stoked, kill dragger. Kill dragger, this is stoked. I'm reading you loud and clear. Stoked, I've got a great copy on you, Robert. Dude, I want to check out the, um, the AIS on this thing. So if I hit quit, is it gonna, it'll probably disconnect us, right? Well, I mean, it's not like it's secure anyway. Oh, look at that. We've got all sorts of AIS going on. What is the, what does that beep? Please stop doing that. Oh, it's probably, you probably have to turn off your CPA and TCPA alarm. Mine was defaulted on, so it's like basically the collision alarm. Because I'm in the marina, it's probably thinking I'm gonna collide with everybody. Yeah, mine started doing that. That's that is badass. A drill won't fit in there, so I gotta drill it by hand. And the wood is too dense to screw a screw in there without a pilot hole. So I just do it by hand. Let me, let's see here. That should be long enough. Okay, so it's just a direct connection. I found a I found a hot wire up there. 
I was just curious if it was working for with connected to the panel, the DC panel. Okay, so the problem I'm having right now is when I put this in, if you can see here, it rests over this little rail. And I'm just trying to use the old stuff so that I, can, I don't have to drill any new holes or anything. But because it's resting over the old rail, it won't go down far enough on this. Dang it, I gotta drill another hole by hand. Sweet, so it looks like I'm gonna be able to get these in. Here we go. So this one sits lower than the last one, but it's mounted, it works, boom. So I mounted it on the wall there, inside of the little panel. So it, it's gonna live in there for now. Okay, so I got the uh, VHF installed and the little Wi-Fi NEMA server that Mark gave me um, installed. Check it out. That guy is in there, he's going to town. And it gets its uh, data from this. I've got it plugged in, wired up down there. And then I just put, it's a little ugly, but I just put little uh, black tape on the wires that I'm not using. And then now I have to, um, I'm gonna hook up the NEMA 2000 so that it goes to my chart plotter. I've been working on this stuff most of the day, but we'll get to the NEMA 2000 right now. So it's the next day and I'm getting back at the uh, VHF install and it is, um, I'm trying to hook it up to the NEMA 2000 right now. So that's what I'm kind of sorting out and just, I only have so many cables. So I'm trying to figure out a way to configure it all to where I can get myself an extra cable because I might've had too many cables plugged in before. But So I've got these that I'm gonna try to rearrange a little bit got a couple extras this was actually plugged in already so I might need that and then I'm also starting to uh, label them the cables weren't labeled so I'm gonna label them too anyway Now that one's, I know it's wind, the wind instrument. I think I figured out a way to do it. I was one cable short, but I had to open up this. Um, uh, it's a SeaTac, the old, basically old NEMA to SeaTac adapter, and it gave me one of those little 
it gave me one of these to use. So I had to rewire my wind instrument because it was going to those junction boxes. But now I have to take it under the nav desk where that new little junction box will be. So I've had to re <laughs> freaking tear apart the whole boat and we're getting there. So I'm just pulling this line through. This blue cable will go under into there. And then we should be golden, maybe. Okay, I got it. It's all working. We'll have to do a sea trial and stuff later, later, but so this here, and you can see the AIS targets in green. That is getting AIS from there in that little server that's in there. So that's 0183, NEMA 0183, but then the chart plotter up there, everything is torn apart. But the chart plotter up there gets the signal from the the new VHF. I've got a little Nima Chingadera in there. <clears throat> so it goes to that. That I had to drill some new holes. Which drilling these holes at these angles is terrible. I had to remove this, remove this, get it all out of the way. Then it runs through there, under, under. I gotta clean this. I gotta make sure my zincs are getting cleaned. Anyways, runs under there, up to the mast. But it's all sorted finally. Man, you look like bro. All right, I'm gonna end the video here because it's getting a little long and the um, Data Hub install I haven't even gotten to that part yet. So tune in next time. You'll see the Data Hub install and I'll give an explanation of kind of how they all work together. And um, if you like the video, please hit the like button and subscribe and we'll see you at the next video. Bye.